Only thanks to the North Korea, the Kremlin can still wage its war in Ukraine. At that, many shells were produced a long time ago, but they are still in the service of the North Korea. American military experts write that only thanks to Pyongyang, the Russian Federation can still fight against the Ukrainian armed forces. At that, the North Korea has a lot of shells, even though most of them are unreliable. The resource, foreign policy, informs. As of the summer of 2024, the North Korea supplied the Russian Federation with about 2 million shells. Most of them were defective. The expert on weapons of the North Korea, Van Diepen, said that even despite the large amount of defects among artillery shells, the Russian Federation can still fight against the army of Ukraine. The main tactic of the Russian Federation is to release as many artillery shells as possible before the offensive. Michael Kaufman of the Carnegie Endowment agrees that the North Korea's artillery shells are unreliable, but their quantity also affects the war in Ukraine. Experts say that North Korea shells allow the Russian Federation to have a 3 to 1 advantage on the battlefield. It is Russia's large number of shells, although they are of poor quality, that alarms both Kyiv and the West. About half of the approximately 3 million artillery shells that Russia uses each year in its war against Ukraine come from North Korea, according to the Times. A source of the agency who cited Western intelligence data, Russia has become dependent on supplies from North Korea after Vladimir Putin visited Pyongyang earlier this year. Western intelligence assesses that many of the North Korean shells may be faulty, but their sheer number allowed Russia to achieve consistent successes on the battlefield. The Times source noted that despite this, Russia is suffering significant losses in Ukraine, about 1,200 military personnel per day, 480 of them in the battle for the city of Pokrovsk in the Donetsk region. According to Western intelligence, Russia is currently unable to simultaneously capture Pokrovsk and push Ukrainian forces out of the Kursk region without mass mobilization. However, the Russian authorities are not taking that step at this time. The source of the agency added that there are currently no signs that Putin is backing away from his main goal of subjugating Ukraine's sovereignty. He also added that he sees no prospects for negotiations in the future. Family, relatives, friends and servicemen from the Azov Brigade attend the funeral ceremony of Iyer Kuzicek, 20, also known by call sign Shaka, in Bobrovitsia on Friday, October 4. Iyer Kuzicek joined the army as a volunteer when he turned 18, he died defending Toritsk as a part of a mortar unit. During the funeral ceremony dozens of people came to say goodbye to Iyer, his mother Katerina Kuzicek was crying and hugging the body. His best friend since childhood, Pavlo, serviceman of 35th Brigade, said that Ayer wanted to defend his homeland and his family and friends.
І мені на даний момент мені було 18 років, Ігорю ще було 17, коли я вже приймав участь в бойових діях. Ігор завжди цікавився в мене, як там хотів захищати також батьківщину своїх рідних, близьких, так же саме.